Hey everyone, Sir Tim with you again. So today I'm bringing you guys a little bit something, a little bit more of meta. Uh, I saw a player call, called Jimmy Leary. Leary. I, I'm completely mispronouncing his name, but I know, I know at least I know the first part, Jimmy. So this player on the European server, I said that they were playing this uh, Spectre Matron combo deck. If you're not familiar with this combo, the idea is that you're able to use a Spectre Matron to cheat out Citria, Lady of the Clouds early on and get all your units to have double their power, double their health, and challenger. He ends up being really, really powerful. And he has been a deck that has been on and off over the past like year or so. Uh, we saw Duckling win the seasonal with, with this deck back on uh, July of 2021. So it is it, it is decent deck. Uh, so the idea with this deck is that Jimmy decided to put in Gwen in this deck and just kind of take advantage that way and kind of take more advantage of the hollow boss, right? So the idea here is that we use the hose, we use the phantom butler, we use Gwen to kind of get some hollow buff there to, to, to get some bigger attacks sometimes. And the hollow buff ends up mattering a lot of times because it can actually be the way that you can push lethal. Because remember, the spectrum turn with set your combo gives all your units challenger. So sometimes you can pull the right blockers away, push damage with like a fearsome matron, add in the hollow buff, and she, she can sometimes deal 13, 14, 15 damage in a single turn. So that's really, that's kind of what the one the main win that you win. The rest of the deck is just kind of playing a lot of the Masia and Shadow Isle units to be able to get there because you do need to have units to be able to kind of get full advantage of the Citra comp. So obviously Oblivious Islander is there to kind of cheat out Matron or Citra a little bit earlier. So you can put that in the Matron and now you can get her on turn seven. You can put her on the Citra, you can get her on turn nine, etc. A broad win Floating Project are very good challengers that have a lot of health. So early on, you can survive and take take away some of the opponent's attackers and still have them in the field once you actually get your combo off. Phantom Butler, we talked about it, just hollow buff together with the host. It's a, it's a nice blocker as well. Also has Fearsome. So it can be another attacker that can push lethal later in the game when he's buffed up by your uh, by your Citra. Uh, Gwen and Lutz are champions of choice over here. Gwen is really good because if she's buffed up with the Matron, then it's very easy for her to level up in a single attack. And then from then on, she'll have a bunch more of attack, right? And then Lutz is just there really as a way to give us an kind of alternate removals because you can combine Lutz with Vengeance. We are playing triple Vengeance because of Kai'Sa. Vengeance just ends up shutting down Kai'Sa really quickly and shutting, us, shutting up stuff like Ilawi. So it ends up being really good. And you can combine it. You can play Lutz on five, Vengeance on six a lot of times and be able to get two removals for the cost of one. So yeah, it's been really nice. And she also has barriers, so she can just block the opponent's aggression. Screeching Dragon, just to get some removal in there. And then finally, obviously, the combo of Matron and Citra, right? So again, the way that Matron works is that you play the ally in hand and summon an exact copy, right? Which means that Citra will get an exact copy of it on the field and double everything, including the Matron, to have double attack, double health, and uh, have Challenger. Then for the spell side of things, again, we talk about the three Vengeance. We do have two sharp sets, just some for some help and to protect our units. Two glimpse beyond so that we can draw, because our deck is very critical on drawing our combo. So it's very important that we have enough draw. And that's why we also play triple stocking shadows, right? So let's say that you only have Citria or you only have a turn in your hand. Stocking shadows could potentially get you the other the other side of the combo and allow you to be able to actually get the combo. So I do think stocking shadows, this is one of the decks where you actually definitely want to play stocking shadows. But Enough about that. I think the deck is fun. I wouldn't say that deck is super strong. Uh, it can beat up some decks really easily, but it can be a little bit inconsistent. You're relying so much on this combo, and this combo is coming down on turn 7, the earliest, if you have an Islander, or turn 8 or so. And by that point, a lot of decks in this meta can already run you down. So it can be a little bit inconsistent in that, but it's still a lot of fun, and I still like, kind of like playing this style, so I figured I would showcase it for you all. And give you guys something new to play if you haven't seen this type of this type of deck before so anyways hope you enjoyed the games coming up soon as always if you like the content please make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us we post lor videos every single day see you at the end of the video for some mulligan tips so in this matchup we'll be going up against timelines timelines trondo which is actually really bad for us because we are gonna get hit by very nice right so very nice is gonna be really bad. Kind of like, I like keeping this hand. Like I like the glimpse, right? Because we need to we need to draw into the spectrum mature. Okay, well, <laughs> never mind. You guys, when I said we need to draw into the spectrum mature, I meant that we're gonna naturally draw her anyways. 
So now we just need to make it to turn 8 or even 7. We are attacking our odds, so maybe it's actually worth it to go for turn 7. I'm going to do it basic with, with the opponent. I'm going to do it based on the opponent having... Oh, wow. Did he actually discard nothing here? I'm going to do it based on the opponent having enough mana for Barry and Ice or not. So I think the biggest thing right now is Barry and Ice, right? So if we do this now, I can get this out on turn 7, but if the opponent has Barry and Ice, then it doesn't really matter that much. If I do if I do it on the uh, Citra instead, that could be a little bit better. Because then I can do 8 over here, and then I can steal some Citra on turn 9. We well, probably always want to open, right? So I think it is correct to do it in the Matron. I think it is correct to do it in the Matron and just try to go for like a big attack. So what we need to do is make sure that we keep a board. We keep a heavy enough board pressing so that when she jump when when she jumps down, we're able to buff everything up, right? So now we need to actually draw into the rest of our cards. Lux is a good one. When it goes for the stand swap, we get a set okay, so we get we get we get pretty nuts value here. Oh, we lose the Citra anyway, so it doesn't matter. I forgot that they play aloof. I completely forgot that they play aloof. It would have it would have been the same thing, right? If we did it on the Matron, Matron would still have been nine, and she would have gotten discarded. So at least by doing it, I mean sorry, by doing it on the Matron, we ended up still getting value from the Oblivious Islander. If we did it on the Citra, she would have gotten discarded anyways. Sure. I don't think I really care about this. I kind of don't want to do glimpse. I kind of don't want to do glimpse. I kind of, I kind of want to wait until I have the lots to be able to do the glimpse. That way we can start working on the lots level up. So now this way we'll be able to level up the lots if worse comes to worse. We have the stocking shadows, which is also kind of good. Uh, let's go ahead and just push some damage right now. This is pushing four because of the hollow buff in the graveyard. So we still potentially have the Citra combo, but we only have two more Citrus in our deck and 30 cards. So one out of 15. The opponent gets to have uh, buy as well, so they will be able to kill. How many buy do they play? They only play, they play two buys. They do play two buys. In which case, we probably want a glimpse first, right? It sucks because it means that the buy doesn't get damage, which could be problematic. Who does not know the name, now, and again, very nice just kind of wounds us next time. So that's the problem. Our opponent also gets strong though. Our, our, our saving grace is that our opponent hasn't had the mana for... Okay, there we go. Opponent hasn't had the mana for the... Uh, hasn't get the timelines yet, right? An opponent doesn't have enough mana next turn to actually do the very nice. So this is what I was talking about and why I thought it was important to do this... Uh, to do this on the Matron instead of doing anywhere else. Now we have a pretty good curve here because we can do Matron into Citria. Have a second Matron ready to go. We can kill all of his boar, and Gwen is going to be pretty powerful as well. The only downside here, so we can kill all of his biggest units, right? Everything has Challenger. Uh, I don't want to sacrifice this guy. I kind of want to keep him alive so that we can buff it up with the second Matron. We can kill Trondon and we can kill Vi. Opponent probably has access to a freeze. There it is. Uh, in which case, which is more important here? Which is more important to kill? Like, do we have to go for both? Because remember, this is going to get buffed up to 5, right? So we know that this is going to get buffed up to 5. So we can actually kill this one. This gets buffed up to 7. So maybe we go for it. The Vi is kind of scary, though. The Vi is really scary. Which is my only concern here. Let's go like this. If opponent has a 3 sisters, they have to choose whether they want to keep the Vi or the Trundle alive. They cannot keep both of them alive, right? And this is still clean. This is still clean most of their board. 
Uh, the opponent is always able to kill Gwen anyways because they have access to the Ice Pillar, which is going to attack the Gwen because both of my Ephemerals die this turn. Ice Pillar Archer was a really good punish. Yeah, that's the three sisters. He kills the Gwen. Wow. I don't think I agree with that. Because all my units are big enough to kill Vi right now, right? So opponent doesn't even get to attack. They level up the Vi, but you don't get to attack with Vi. Because she's just going to die. Like, she's literally just going to die right here. Now, I still need to be worried about Barry and I stuff. So we probably... <sighs> This is this is interesting, right? Because if we if we develop next turn, and then we develop on turn nine, opponent just goes for very nice, and they can win the game that way. But I also don't feel like doing them a turn right now and losing the body from the femoral situation. So maybe we don't play around it. Maybe we don't play around it. Again, that's why I was. That, that's why I thought that they are, uh, because he could have gotten the same thing. He could have got another. He could have leveled up the buy with the flash freeze, and had the same effect that he had right there. So it's a little bit weird that they did it that way. I'm gonna summon this so that the opponent thinks that they can go and attack it. If the opponent has very nice, then we just lose, right? That's gonna be 10, 15, I guess 10, 15, 17, 19. Opponent saving the pillar. Yeah. I can't play around it. Yeah, I can't play around it. I can't play around it. If they have it, they have it. If they have very nice, they have it. I think I just want to go full, full in next turn. We can sharp sight to kill the Vi. We get value everywhere else. If opponent has Mystic Shot, that's okay with me. If I can kill his units, that's better for us, because it means that potentially we could, we can survive. But that's not true now, right? Because we still go down to 7. Oh, I still go down to 8, sorry. Troll Shen? Okay. Still has enough mana for Berry Nice, so if they get the Berry Nice, we lose the game. They just thought that that troll shan does too, right? So it doesn't make sense. Like they, they only got saved because of troll shan. Still has access to very nice, which is the problem here. Only has two cards though, so we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it, and if they have it, they have it. We can kill the vi. We can kill everything else. We don't have lead though just yet. Even if we pull everything and attack with the Matron, it's only 12. Opponents are 14. Can I go ahead and double up their Trondo? That's their second Trondo, by the way. That means that there was no very nice here. This does the most damage. We can go here. And I guess we'll just go ahead and kill everything, right? Might as well just kill everything. Opponent could have opponent already use two. No, opponent only use one three sisters. Bolt breaker, you're gonna sacrifice your second buy when she could have pushed five damage. I'm not sure about that being correct. Wait, I'm not sure about this being correct by the opponent. You kill one unit, but we have you know we have Citria, right? So you know we have Citria, so you know we're always going to summon another Citria. So I'm not sure what that was supposed to accomplish. This is the people problem. I'm your man. We have enough mana to do Sharp Sight or Glimpse if we need to. I'm still kind of scared of Berry Nice, and they could have actually gotten it from the Financier as well. Luck. You discard one Citria, please discard the Ephemeral one. He discarded the ephemeral one. Why did we play it slow? Why did we go Broadwin, Screeching, and then Citria? That way we have more units that get buffed up, right? 
But it still hasn't used whatever Sitska spell they have in their hand. Whatever spell they got from Finesia, they still haven't used it. I like how we ended up drawing another Citra, by the way, from the <laughs> from the Alucha. So we still have two of them. This one is actually going to stay in the field because this one is not ephemeral. When it goes for the Aftershock, we can go ahead and do the sharp side. That means the opponent is down to a single card that was created by Financier and nothing else. So if that last card is something that can stop this, then they get the win. Otherwise, I don't see how they come back from this. Remember, we have the Fearsome on the Matron, so this is lethal if the opponent is not able to deal with the Matron because we can pull the Fearsome blockers away. It's very easy to forget about her having Fearsome. He ends up being a win condition in a lot of our games. So again, is, is Barry an Ice or Bus? I guess technically he could have like the Winter's Breath as well. That's another option that he could have gotten from the Financier. We made it. Gets to this card, last later the Cloud. And this is what we do the game. This is what we win the game now because we can just pull. Uh, let's go ahead and pull here. Pull here. 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 Yep, yeah, this seems about right to me. Because remember, the fearsome. He doesn't have a block before us. So now he needs to have drawn the last three sisters. So he needs to have drawn the last three sisters to be able to uh, freeze our Matron. Otherwise, this is just game. I'm very glad that we didn't play about where... So sometimes you can't play around it, right? When this game started, that was the first thing I talked about. Like, the way that the opponent wins this game is very nice. At some point, you have to, like, just not play around it, because if they have it, they have it. If they have very nice, we're always losing this game, because the whole game plan relies on having a big board that gets buffed up by Citri or Lady of Clouds, right? So if the opponent has very nice at any point in this game, they can always do it in response to us doing a Matron Citri play and just win anyways. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to play around something that you know that you're always going to lose to, no matter how long they hold it on for. And we get to push some nice damage here to finish up the game. Whew. All right, we're getting close, close, but just not enough on the opponent. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Kaisa Silver. This matchup is going to be really, really bad for us. Now, we do play Vengeance. We play Vengeance, and I kind of feel like I want a hard mulligan for it. I keep one Loden Project because Loden Project ends up being really good. We don't get the Vengeance, and we don't get our combo on Matron and Citria either. So this is looking kind of shady now. This is looking not, like not so great anymore. We could do Brawlwind into Protege. That lets me kind of clear up their board. Okay, we get the Vengeance. We get the Vengeance. So we just need to make sure. So let's keep that in mind. We need to make sure we have enough mana that we can Vengeance the Kai'Sa as soon as she comes down. So if we do the... Kaisa is not coming down to turn 5, so we can go ahead and do the Lord and Protege right here. So we can do the Lord and Protege. We can go ahead and kill this guy. If the opponent has their scout, it's not enough right now. Citra, we get one part of the combo. So we can go Phantom Butler, and then next turn have enough mana for the for the vengeance on the Kaisa, right? We can kill the Blinding Assault. So we can kill the Blinding Assault with our Challenger. So Pony should go ahead and just kill the kill the Phantom Butler while they have the chance. There's absolutely no reason not to. I, I, I understand why they hesitated, but I don't agree with it. So we're going to go like this. Just kill their Scout right now and keep our mana for Vengeance to be able to kill their Kai'Sa. Because if there's someone Kai'Sa right now on, turn, um, on this turn, she will die. Opponent only has done five keywords, so Kaisa will level up this boiling. So Kaisa will level up the boiling. Now the opponent could have sharp side here. That would be the punish. That way this thing stays alive. I mean they are uh, sorry, the battle stays alive. I think it's just important that we keep our benches man out. Absorber? Not enough, right? They will need to have another Absolver. They didn't, so they lose their scout anyways. 
And if the opponent doesn't summon Kaiser right here, all we have to do is just... Like, I don't want to do the stock in Shadows, because opponent definitely wants to do Kaiser. Opponent's playing around Vengeance correctly. So now we can do the Spectrum Matron here. And then we can also do the Lots. Because opponent just tapped out of Kaiser, right? We probably could have done the Lots first, by the way, but, you know. Let's ignore that. We took two damage for no reason. Let's ignore the fact that we could have done the Lots first. Now, opponent taps out of Kaisa. So then next, so we can do Spectrum Matron into Lady of the Clouds. All our units are going to be big challengers. And it's not going to matter what the opponent does. If I do, if I go like this and the, if opponent has Concerted Strike, am I okay with that? If opponent has Concerted Strike, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Like... Lutz, losing Lutz sucks, but it's not like Lutz was going to be like our, our, the way that we win this game, right? The way that we win this game is, comes right here. Now, obviously, the downside to doing this now is that the opponent could have access to Kaiser afterwards. But I feel like our units are going to get big enough, right? And this is actually lethal. If the opponent doesn't summon anything, like this is actually lethal. Our opponent ends up actually summoning stuff, though, so it's not going to be lethal. Uh, actually, still, it still is lethal, right? Opponent needs to have a fearsome blocker. So opponent needs to have a fearsome blocker here. So the opponent we need to commit sharp sight or single combat, and they don't have it, so that's game. I forgot that the butler is actually at a fearsome, right? So there you go, GGs. Here in this matchup, we'll be going up against uh, Yasuo Katarina. The stuns can be annoying, but our units are going to get really big, right? So we might be able to be okay. I don't hate the Screeching Dragon. It's going to force the opponent to have an answer for it. I really don't hate the Screeching Dragon, but maybe it's a little bit too early. It's a little bit too early. I want to keep the Matron because we have a pretty good chance of hitting the combo with Matron plus Stalking Shadows. Um, But I still don't know. Hmm. I, I like the I like the butler over the brawl one. I like the butler over the brawl one. We can push five here. That's pretty good for us. The stunts are gonna be a problem, right? So the stunts are gonna be a problem, even with this. And we also tack it on eight, so this is actually a good curve. Oh, this is a crazy hand here. We can do protege brawl win butler. I know that's a like that's a little that's a little bit of annoying an annoying power, by the way. But yes, it is what it is. Yeah, we have a pretty crazy curve right here. He's gonna be able to heal for four. Which which one do we sacrifice? Which one do we sacrifice? I guess I guess the opponent just made the choice for us, huh? So opponent just made the decision for us. We're gonna we just sacrifice the brow win here. We only pushing one damage, but that's okay. I just want to put a, I just want to put a lot of pressure on them, right? I want to put a lot of pressure so that they don't have, they don't ever have the time to like stabilize. I kind of like the lots here. Kind of like the lots here, because we can start threatening the laser as well. Putting cool attack with Katarina. And if they attack with Katarina, I'm okay with that. Now I definitely like the locks even more. So you can do the Blaze Edge, kill one of these guys, and that's just gonna get the Hollow buff in the graveyard. So now we just need to get like Vengeance or a second stuck in shadows, and we should be in a good spot. Okay, that's that's a little bit unfortunate, right? That's a that's a good draw for them. That is a good draw for them. We can go like this, right? We can go like this, I guess. The opponent's always gonna block here. We only push three. The opponent goes like this, that means that they have access to a flock. So the fact that they did it that way tells me they have access to flock. There it is. Let's do the stalking shadows now while we have the mana. The one choice that we were looking for, huh? The one choice that we were looking for. So now opponent needs to just kill all of this, right? 
Now Yasuo is annoying because Yasuo is going to start clearing my board. Because Yasuo is going to be leveled up right here. He can go here. Put in cool kill both of these units. And if he does, he needs to kill them right now. I want to see if I can get another unit. Oh, that's not what we're looking for. I wanted to see if I could get another unit that I could summon. Okay, well, we can do the Matron now. We can do the Matron. Opponent's going to have to have a lot of stuns to do to survive this, right? Opponent, I guess opponent can do the Katarina. That's the first stun right here. That's going to stun this. Opponent's going to have to commit the stun. I need to, I need to just target the Yasuo with the Ephemeral, right? Right? So I can target the... Oh, wait. We have Lito. We have Lito. So we can go like this. Oh, actually, I want to... I want to drag this one with the one that's not damaged. So this is lethal. Opponent needs to have two stuns. One to save Yasuo, which doesn't do anything to this. And one to stop the lethal. And we still keep the Matron in our hand. In our in our, in our our graveyard. In our field, sorry. So one stun to save the Yasuo. Oh, the, okay. okay. I guess they saved Katarina that way too. Okay, so he got the, he got the two stuns. He gets to clear our whole board. Except for two units, right? Yasuo still cannot attack. Because all our units are still big enough. We have the Vengeance. And we can also just do the second... The second... Uh, Citria, right? Katarina goes back to his hand. So it's not like he has a good... I guess he could attack with Yasuo here. Get the free 5 damage. We still... Opponent down to two cards. And we still have pretty good blockers. I guess we don't have blockers here. We can vengeance that Yasuo. Opponent's gonna have to have the deny. Let's force him to have the deny. I wanna force him to have the deny right here. Because we can summon Gwen, right? So now opponent didn't have the deny, so now he has no way to kill this Matron. We can summon the Gwen and do the second Citria. Opponent's gonna opponent just lost the stun from not having a second Yasuo. Opponent's gonna oh wait, but opponent gets a ton of stuns here, huh? So opponent gets to stun two units because of Katarina. But once again, I think he's fine because I think we're gonna I think we're gonna threaten, right? I think we're gonna threaten the Yasuo kill one more time. Opponent's gonna have to have two more stuns as well. So opponent's still gonna have to have two more stuns. And one of them doesn't really do anything. This is presenting lethal here, so they have to block. They have to have a stun to stop this. Oh, wow. So they decided to lose their gas well. It's a little bit scary because if the opponent gets another Katarina, we start losing, right? We're really low on value. Because of the Kat if the opponent has a second Katarina, we lose the game. Because the windswept payload is going to stun my units on the open attack. No he actually has it, huh? I think it's, I think it's actually kind of BS, by the way, that that works that way. Where he stuns again, even though she already has the attack token. So they win the game here, because there's no way for us to stop their lethal. Unless we get another Matron. So they just need to summon Katarina here. That was that was that was unfortunate. That was well played though by them. But double Katarina ends up being a little bit unfortunate. GG's. Here we'll be going up against a Cirelia, which I think is gonna be almost impossible, right? Our deck wants to go really late. While their deck just kind of combos us out really early. Now Benjus could be good. Benjus could be good at killing a Seer. So that could be a way that we can start up some damage until we get to our biggest Spectrumatron turn. Because once we have a Spectrumatron into Citria, one is going to have a really hard time, right? Keeping the units alive. But of course, we don't have the Citria yet and Spectrumatron still comes down on turn 8. We are attacking on turn 8, so that is good for us. We don't have enough mana for vengeance next turn. I wonder if it was actually better to keep the mana for vengeance so that we can kill a seer as soon as it drops down. 
It's a consideration that that was actually correct. <clears throat> no sharp side is also kind of sad right here because your opponent's going to get a lot of value here. Right? It's going to be a seer. Irelia. Okay, but opponent doesn't have access to the flawless duet. Hmm. Let's go here. This gives me the challenger here for a future turn. I kind of feel like doing the Gwen. I feel like I, I feel I feel like doing the Gwen. It get it lets me heal too, right? I know I, could, I know I could have open attack with the challenger, but I think that the open attack is actually slightly weaker. Now. I think I have to kill the domination. I'm really oh man, these elusives are gonna kill us though. These elusives are gonna kill us. Which is a problem. But the domination becomes a really big threat with the Aurelia Blade, right? So it also becomes really concerning. Opponent gets the sparing student anyways. We have some blockers, so we can do vengeance and the host. But again, the Green Grey duo. We might have to literally just bang against that Green Guy duo. Or maybe not. Maybe we just bang against the Seer now. So we're going to take five, six, seven. So we're going to take seven. Slightly more here. We don't block with Gwen because blocking with Gwen means that the opponent can attack with Irelia. We can sacrifice the Brawlwind into the Gringlet duo next turn. Okay, so do we ever play around? Hmm. Do we ever have to play around? So if the opponent has to find and dance, right? That's not a problem for me. This is not a problem either just yet. Uh, yeah, right. Actually, it's probably better to just do it this way. We go here. We go ahead and kill the Irelia right now where we have the chance. The Gwen will level up. Now, opponent could have access to Quinn. Okay, so Gwen levels up. Opponent is down to just a single elusive. Loses the Irelia. Has the sparing student. We have blockers for the sparing student because we can summon the we can summon the oblivious islander. If the opponent gets a second seal, that's a problem. So we have blockers. Okay, that's actually really good for us. That's really good for us because unless the opponent gets a seer, this is not really going high, right? And if the opponent gets a seer, we cannot vengeance it. We can block everything else that the opponent has. Okay, so that's the Defiant Dance. It's still not enough, right? We have blockers and we can just summon Lux and opponent's just pushing two damage. Sure. It's not enough. Because now we can just summon the Lux, right? The Lux gives me a blocker. So the opponent actually cannot even attack, which means that we keep our dragon alive. And then next time we do the Gwen, and there you go. Wow. Okay, so we got a little bit lucky that the opponent just ended up drawing a bunch of wonders. But they did have both champions. They had a Seer and they had one Irelia. And they also happened to have the domination. But so it wasn't a complete low roll, but it also wasn't a great hand for them. So GG's. So here in this matchup, we'll be going up against Annie Sick Karina. So this is like a really aggressive deck. I played this deck before and I've gone against it as well. Our hand doesn't look bad at all. Uh, especially since we have Gwen. Stuck in Shadow seems a little bit too expensive though. So I'm going to try to kick it away and see if we can get something else. Oh, okay. Not great, because that's also just as expensive. That's also just as expensive. So we don't have a way to actually trigger the Challenger on the Broadwind. We should be really good against Annie. Um, we can pass for now. We probably find a better blocker. And obviously, we can always just block this Treasure Seeker with the Broadwind. Oh, we can just block the Saboteur as well. So this is really good now. Uh, we can always kill this next turn. Is that correct? That's not true, right? So we can never kill this because this is not going to have enough attack. Because this only is going to have two health. 
So why do we go like this? We take four versus only taking three. I mean, sorry, we take five versus only taking three. But it keeps our thing alive, and this thing is going to be a problem later on. So yeah, I'm going to go like this. I need to get rid of that. I need to get rid of the Bakai Reaper. I need to get rid of the Bakai Reaper, and in order to do that, we're going to need to just go for it right here. I know it's technically taking a little bit more damage on the front end, but it's going to be worth it later on, right? Because this guy is going to put a lot of pressure with the Fearsome. It's going to add up really, really quickly. Now, the fact that we don't have access to Sharpside was also awkward there. Otherwise, I would have done it and just done the Sharpside this turn. So we will need to join to the Sharpside as well. The Gwen is going to help out a lot, like we talked about, though, right? Because the Gwen is going to have access to uh, her Drain. And it's going to quickly level up. I don't think opponent has a really great way to deal with her. When it still has the Fearsome, so now they'll be able to just attack us right here. We might have to just sacrifice that Gwen. So now, because now they can just pull the the broad the broad uh, broad win with the treasure seeker or with the threat or with the sands and still push four damage. We get a combo. Let's wait one more. Let's wait one more. Okay. Let's see what they do. Okay. Now I can play Gwen. I can always block Gwen. I can use Gwen to block the saboteur. Right? We have enough to get through even six. We're gonna have to just take that. What? Oh, I guess they do it that way because it doesn't really matter, right? Like, it's, it's not really gonna matter, right? So we're just gonna go like this. This allows us to start working on the on the Gwen level up. Opponent will be able to quote unquote kill Gwen. I think it's more important for us to keep the Gwen alive. But this is going to be more damage over time, because this is going to be 4 damage. So why did we actually sacrifice the Gwen? I think it's going to be more damage over time if we let that stay alive. Because Gwen is only healing 2 and this is pushing 4, right? We have the Vengeance, and we're going to have to rely on the Stalking Shadows this turn. This is not great. Phantom Butler is not bad. I wish I would have gotten the... Yeah, like... Screeching Dragon would have been so good. But it is what it is. We only need to survive... We only need to survive one turn, right? So that then we can do the maturing to the Citra and we're able to clear his board. Wow, uh, we can push this damage here. How good is that? How good is this 5 damage? Opponent's gonna be able to deal 1 damage to us. We could Vengeance the 6 on the stack, stopping his 1 damage, keeping us at, at 6 HP. If the opponent has Ruin Runner and really sad, because that, that's going to be dealing 5, right? So Ruin Runner will kind of make us really sad here. If it's something other than Ruin Runner, I'm okay. So we have a blocker. Still can play Ruin Runner, by the way, so... Okay, 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 okay. I think I want to Vengeance the 6. So I think I want to Vengeance the 6. If the opponent gets greedy here. And then next turn we do the Matron into Citria. Oh. So we lose to a Decimate now. Right? We lose to a Decimate now. So Matron into Citria is not lethal just yet. We're one off. We're one off. We're one off, right? No, that's not true. This is going to go to 12. This is going to go to 12 and the Halo puts us there. So if the opponent has the Decimate, they got it. If they have the Decimate, they win. If they have another unit plus Fervor, they win. And they have the Decimate. Yeah, that would have been lethal, by the way. Because even if the opponent has a blocker, we have the Halo buff. So this would have gone up to uh, 16. And we have, we have given us the win right there. But... They have the second decimate, so no matter what we did, we kind of went in trouble. Because if we don't do the vengeance last turn, six pushes too much damage. So GG's. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Mono Kaiser. This is gonna be very tough. This is gonna be very, very tough here. Um 
I like the Screeching Dragon. It can threaten the kill on the Kai'Sa, and the Protege can also be really good, and then the Stuck in Shadows. Honestly, I like this whole hand. Because it gives me the challengers to be able to stop Kai'Sa from potentially just blowing us out on turn 5. The opponent also doesn't have the attack token on turn 5, so we're decent. We're in decent shape. I don't mind getting the Halo buff, because it just means that our units start becoming bigger. The only downside is that we don't have the combo yet, right? We don't have either Matron or Citria. We do have double stuck in shadows though, so that could be a potential. I'd rather not block here. Because we can just kill this with the protege instead. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna block. I'm gonna try to get a favorable trade right here. Okay, we get one piece of the combo. It, uh, opponent cannot beat us with the sharp side because we have the hollow buff. So even if the sharp side, all they're doing is letting get is, is killing the protege, right? So by pulling with the protege first, we play around the sharp side. There you go. Still allows us to kill his unit, even if the opponent ends up trading. So we got the sharp side out of them. The opponent has only done two keywords sometimes. We get vengeance, which could be really good. Yeah, vengeance is gonna be really good, huh? Ooh, this is not what I was looking for, though. So we want to keep the vengeance for Kaisa when she comes down. So we don't want to summon this. We want to keep the mana. We can kill his guy right away. Which I'm surprised that he summoned the battle, to be honest. I'm surprised that the opponent summoned the battle the way that they did. Now, I can take yeah, no. We're not gonna let that we're not gonna let that stick. And I need to do it now before the opponent is able to do right negation. We're not gonna let that stick. We still need we're still looking for our Citria. Now if the opponent has a second Kaisa, then I'm kinda sad. But even with a second Kaisa, I don't think they're in a winning spot just yet. They could have rather right of our uh right of our calling right here. If it's literally Balor into second Kaisa, then I don't know what else I could have done this game, right? If it's literally Balor into second Kaisa, I really have no idea what I could have done this game. Huh. Huh. There's no way, right? I'm gonna keep the six mana so that the opponent thinks that we have a second vengeance. Okay. That's not as bad, right? Opponent, opponent got scared of the second vengeance, so that's why they ended up not just dropping the Kaisa down. Yep, they still scared of it. We get our combo off. We can do the Screeching Dragon here, because he can actually kill the Kaisa. We just pass. Again, opponent's kind of scared. Opponent thinks that we have vengeance. So they don't want to summon that Kaisa until we quote unquote tap out of vengeance, which allows us to summon all our units. If opponent literally has nothing this turn, then they're going to be in trouble. Now, summoning all these units is risky as well, right? Ah, okay. So I guess eventually he had to do it, right? Eventually they have to do it and not play around the vengeance. Now, supercharge is kind of annoying, but it might not be bad. Mm, let's do this. Maybe this, this is going to give us a lot of hollow buffs, right? And then next time we do Matron into Citria, and we should still be able to win. This only has two keywords. My hope is that it hits. Yeah, there we go. It hit the Ephemeral. We can Glimpse. Oh, wait. Glimpse is bad because he made it. Oh, yeah. Glimpse is bad. He made it that we hit the Phantom Butler. So I forgot about that. That's, a, that's my fault. That's my fault. Slightly misplay on my part. It's all right, though, because we get the Broad win. It, it, gave, it gives us one less unit, right? If the opponent has Cataclysm, I'm really sad. But it's not Cataclysm, so now we have everything that can kill Kaiser. Our units are also big enough now that we can kill anything that the opponent does. So his Kaiser is a lot less threatening now that we have these big units on the field. This is also lethal if the opponent literally has nothing else. And there we go. A slight misplay there at the end because we ended up doing the glimpse and losing to the Phantom Butler. Uh, losing the Phantom Bl Butler for no reason. So, glad he ended up working out though just because the opponent played around vengeance.
like all those turns ago when they didn't summon Kai'Sa, right? So GG's. Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed those games. You can see what I talk about, right? The deck is very reliant on that combo and it can be easily shut down. You saw how quickly that Yasuo deck, well, I guess not quickly, it took them a while, but how nice they were able to shut us down because they have access to all these stunts, right? So it does have a lot of vulnerabilities that the deck has, which can make it a little bit awkward. Uh, it loses to stuff like very nice. We just got lucky in that one win that we had that the opponent ended up not joining. Uh, but it's a lot of things because you're so board centric that you can just die to like ruination as well. That's why I don't think this deck is that strong. But again, it has some merit, right? And that's the beauty of LOR. There's a lot of decks in LOR that are not tier one, but they can fall into the tier two, tier three kind of state and still pull a lot of wins and sometimes get you all the way to diamond or masters, uh, depending on who's following it. So that's why I love this game. Because this game, I feel like there's a lot of actual viable decks out there. But enough, enough spiel about that. In terms of Mulligan, I definitely like to keep, if I have like one of the pieces of the combo, I like to keep one of them, right? Because again, this deck is completely relying on this combo. So if I do have one Matron or I have one Cetria, I will keep them. Just in hope that I draw the second piece later on, or I draw Stalking Shadows to be able to do it. Uh, but then in the meantime, you do you do need to survive. So you do need to keep your early units. So the Hose, Broadwind, Obvious Islander, Phantom Butler, Prodigy. You want to get all of these units on the field as soon as possible so you can actually survive some of the aggression and can kind of start pulling off some of the opponent's units by pulling them with your challengers. So I would recommend just keeping all your units, keeping one piece of the combo, keeping vengeance against Kai'Sa is very, very important. Same thing as Ilawi. Uh, it just shuts things down really easily. So if you see a vengeance, to the point that I feel like in the Kai'Sa match, you might have to actually just harm Mulligan for Vengeance. Just because how easily you lose the game on turn 5 if the Kai'Sa comes down level up. But aside from that, I think that would be my, my Mulligan advice. Gwen could be a good keep a lot of times as well because she does let you heal up. So it kind of helps as well with that, with the keeping yourself alive until turn 8. Uh, but everything else I, I would kind of kick and just try to get back later, right? So, But anyways, enough about that. If you like this video and you like this deck, please make sure to like the, uh, like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. We also stream on Twitch at Twitch Search Term, where, we, where we stream about three to four times a week. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.